In 1747, King Ferdinand VI of Spain made a public statement declaring that California was not an island. <laughs> what a weird thing to say. I wonder where that came from. Someone had to declare that California wasn't an island? Like, officially? On record? Okay. For about 250 years, there were two competing versions of world maps, one depicting North America much like we know it today, and another depicting California as a separate landmass. Official history records this as a mistake, a misconception about the Baja Peninsula. Supposedly, the first explorers were just following a well-known legend at the time that described an island named California off of the west coast of the Americas. Then when the first explorers found the tip of the California Baja Peninsula, they assumed that they found that island and reported that back when they returned home. That story is bizarre, but it does make sense until you pick away at it a little bit. I'm fairly certain that most of you are gonna walk away from this video confident that California was never an island, but I think that there's just enough here to lead me to believe that it's possible that this was true. There's stuff on some of these maps that cartographers shouldn't have known about, and unique features that appear only on the island California version of maps that we later discovered were true. I think it's worth looking closer into a few of the concepts that I brought up in my History as a Lie series, so we're gonna deep dive into a few of them as an excuse to keep wearing our tinfoil helmets. I know that a lot of the theories that I presented were pretty ridiculous on the face of them, but I think that it's worth our time to determine how likely they really are. And by that I mean it'll be fun. <laughs> Obviously it's easy to see how the average person between the 16th and 18th centuries would have believed that this was true. California was literally depicted as an island to the public in several countries for nearly 300 years. Very clearly defined as an island with exact measurements, repeating features across multiple maps, implying confidence in their knowledge of scale and full coastline definition. But were cartographers correct about this, or were they using incomplete data and filling in the blanks with their best guess? Well, before we answer that, we're going to have to thank today's sponsor, Raycon. Music is my favorite thing. I've had my Raycon Everyday Earbuds for a couple of years now, and I still love them. Whether I'm out on a hike or at the grocery store, I gotta have my music. I stopped listening to music just to film this ad spot, and I've been actively fighting off tears for the better part of 30 minutes now. And with the holidays just around the corner, Raycons make the perfect gift. They're great for listening to podcasts and audiobooks, too. The new everyday earbuds have an improved rubber oil look and feel, and amazing gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. I love how slick these look in the ear. Raycons offer 8 hours of continuous playtime and with the case feature a 32 hour battery life. And there's a built in microphone. These babies let you take calls with the press of a button. I tend to wear these when I'm working out too and usually I'm pretty paranoid about earbuds falling out but I've loved how little these moved around on me. I rarely have to adjust them. And if you don't feel the same way as I do and you're not satisfied with your order, Raycons come with a 45 day happiness guarantee. But for what you're getting though, Raycons have like the same high quality sound as other premium audio brands, but start at like half the price. All you gotta do is click that link in the description below or go to buyraycon.com skeptic to unlock exclusive deals up to 20% off of your Raycon order. And by clicking that link, you help to support this channel. Bye Raycon! The official story of the island of California misconception stems back to a fictional novel published in 1510, Las Sergas des Esplanden, 
or, or whatever. The story described a mythical island off of the west coast of America named California. It had no men, and their only metal was gold. At the time, the first Spanish explorers to study the west coast were apparently consciously looking for this mythical island of California. And when they reached the bottom tip of the Baja California Peninsula, they determined that this island did in fact exist. This was a time when explorers were on the hunt for El Dorado, the city of gold. After the first group reported what they saw, nobody returned to California to examine it again for several years. So maps were made with supposedly what was their best guess that they could make at the time. An entire massive island, a wild guess based on the tip of the Baja. And that is how the entire myth of the island of California began. At this point in history, ships had to travel all the way around the bottom of South America to make it to the west coast, which proved to be costly, time-consuming, and have very little payoff. The Spanish said that there was very little to exploit. So, only a handful of ships actually made it that far, and their reports were contradicting, incomplete, and poorly communicated. For example, one of the gaps between visits was over 200 years. Some of the reports were even considered rumors. It seems like they weren't really all that concerned with being accurate or discovering much about the area. Or at least, that's how it's described in these stories. The story continues when another expedition was set to the Baja Peninsula a few years after the first. Continuing up the coast of Mexico, they found the entrance to the Colorado River and reported back that California was most certainly not an island correcting the mistake made by the first expedition. This mistake was corrected by map makers who drew California as part of the mainland from that point onwards. But it didn't take long before a competing line of maps would start to be published once again depicting California as an island. A letter was found supposedly written by one of the earlier Spanish explorers, claiming that they observed that California was an island and that the Gulf of California was actually a channel. There was even a rumor of boats getting caught up in the current of the channel and being swept down south. Yeah, so for some reason we have two different versions of California being published simultaneously between the 1500s and 1700s. Spain, Amsterdam, and England were among the many countries that adopted the island version of California. Then, an expedition was finally able to make it through the ice sheet of the northern islands of Canada, breaking through to the Pacific Ocean in 1592. After this, they find again, somehow, that California is indeed an island. Claiming that they observed the entire west coast of America, they report their findings back and this just continues to confuse everyone. Yet again, someone reports that California is an island. But it's now believed that this expedition actually just found the top of Vancouver Island. And somehow, they took what they found about the top of Vancouver Island and the bottom of the California Baja Peninsula and just filled in the blanks in between. Again, that's the official story. Finally, James Cook takes a voyage to the west coast in the mid 1700s, and he's just like, guys, there's no island. It's not here. We saw nothing like, nor was there the least probability that ever any such thing existed as the island of California. Another excuse that we can use is that cartography wasn't an exact science back then. Remember, they couldn't get aerial views of what they were mapping, so they had to depend entirely on memory based on what they were seeing while they were sailing along coastlines, or expeditions that they would send on foot. I mean, yeah, they had the stars and the sun and everything to sort of give them an idea of where they were on the globe. But another problem is they didn't actually really know how big the planet was back then. Uh, some of the earlier maps showed Japan right where Minnesota should be, for example. So, uh, yeah, they had some bugs to iron out still. But what I find weird is that the versions of America that depict California as an island are really accurate. Kind of scarily accurate. I mean, the maps depicting California as part of the mainland are obviously more correct, at least when compared to maps of today. But they're weird, bulbous. 
The west coast is just a continuous angled line from the tip of the Baja Peninsula to the end of Alaska. The St. Lawrence River is far too long and rarely depicts any of the Great Lakes. Whereas the island versions of the map seem to have better dimensions. They're scaled more accurately. And they also add new lakes and rivers and stuff like that much more frequently. It was almost as if, along with a competition between map styles, there was an information race between the two maps. And for some reason, the island version of California was winning. But perhaps the most bizarre and hardest to understand discrepancy between the two map styles is the names of locations. It's like two different realities. Several of the locations on the island version of California that we know of today are not mentioned on the mainland version of California for some reason, no acknowledgement of them. Like, is this a political thing, or what's going on here? Yes, between the competing maps from the time, the ones depicting California as an island were the most accurate, other than California being an island, of course. But they featured the Great Salt Lake long before the mainland California maps did. What can we make of this enigma? First of all, they do make the point to include several large islands off the west coast of the island of California. There are islands here today, even though the story doesn't describe the first explorers going that high up. Maybe they did discover this island cluster. I mean, the islands are a little bit too large. They're definitely nothing like the ones today. But this could just be chalked up to sloppy observations, right? Well, we have to ask then, if they were right about those islands, when we look in what we're calling the California Channel, why is it that in every version of the island of California map, they include these same four islands in the exact same order? Every one of them. In fact, some of these maps include more islands, as if to imply that they discovered more or something. So this is the first major red flag. Again, the official story is that the group just landed on the tip of the Baja, and maybe they saw those islands on the west, fine. But why is it that every single map depicts those same four islands up the channel? What are they doing guessing so many islands and so many features if all they've done is just confirm that this island exists. I think that the placement of these islands is key to figuring out where this channel would have been relative to modern California. This part is going to blow your mind. The last time I talked about this, I threw up an image of somebody else's work, and I have to be honest, I didn't really put much faith into it at the time. But after going through a few different maps, I have to agree that this is actually the most likely placement for these four islands. It's not perfect, but for the 1500s it works. So to give you a starting point, this little island, second from the bottom, is next to now Las Vegas. So this whole area here is Death Valley. These are the lowlands here today. So I was thinking to myself that that means that this California island shoreline here would line up with the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be cool if it turned out that the simplest answer here was that the entire eastern shore of California island followed that mountain range? That'd be convenient. Okay, so check this out. I was looking up how the topography works in the area, separating California from Nevada. This particular image depicts the Owens Valley area. It's just an example, but it shows how the land on the west is climbing up over the Nevada plate, causing a ridge line. They call this the Nevada Fault Line. So I was like, wow, I, I wonder where the Nevada Fault Line runs. The Nevada Fault Line runs exactly along where the eastern shoreline of the California island would be. It's exact. The same angle and everything. What the f***? What a guess. This is, this is all based on a guess. Cartographers were just amazing guessers back then. <laughs> Jesus. Then I just have a few questions about the dimensions of California. When it's depicted as an island, again, it's just an arbitrary guess about what size it is. But for some reason, after they realized that it was a mainland feature, they kept it that exact same size? 
But even some of these mainland California maps show a mountain range at the top of California, so maybe they were all in agreement that there was some sort of a natural barrier there. But that could also be the northern shoreline of the island, so I don't know what to tell you. I guess that's really more of a political question. Just, it just kind of strikes me as funny. The island starts at the 23.5 degree latitude mark, which is basically where the Baja Peninsula starts today. So like I said last time, cartographers don't just f around. These maps are precise. Sailors have to use these maps to navigate. The island then ends at the 43 degree mark, which is more or less the bottom portion of Oregon today. So basically the top of modern California. The thing is, there was a time when Spain was straight up lying about California being an island. They knew that the theory had already been debunked, but they kept up the lie in order to maintain control of California during some peace treaty that had been written up. And barely anybody ever went to the island, so they managed to get away with this lie for over two 200 years. But just because California wasn't an island in the 1600s doesn't mean that it wasn't an island at some point. And the Spanish didn't determine the size of California based on the treaty, they determined the size of California based on that first map that was drawn up in the 1500s. Yeah, we only have two options. We only have two options here. Either California is this size because the island of California was once this size, or California is this size because the first explorers that got here arbitrarily guessed it was around this size and that just stuck forever. And nobody ever questioned why California had to end at around the 42 degree mark. Wh whatever, that's, we just have to live with that logic. I guess. Then there are the rivers and the lakes, and I could talk about these for like an hour. I came across a ton of Easter eggs that I didn't expect to find. Uh, let's piece this together. You're gonna love this. To start, the entrance to the Colorado River is about 32 degrees north, which is about here on the map. That certainly looks like the entrance to the Colorado River, but it's not exactly doing what it's supposed to do. It heads east through Arizona, and it leads up to this massive lake that's sitting right on top of the 40 degree mark, almost where the Great Salt Lake is today, but not quite. The Colorado River most certainly does not feed from a giant lake today. But we're gonna come back to this lake later. I mean, ugh, guys, I stick around, I promise you, it's, ugh, it's so good. Today, the river starts in the same spot, but runs north along the border of California, then basically turns 90 degrees east through the Grand Canyon. And before that, do you know what city it runs past? That's right, Las Vegas, baby. So if these islands are around where Las Vegas is, then somewhere around here is the old entrance to what is now the Colorado River. It's obvious that this is some sort of giant river delta region. Either of these bottom entrances could easily have led to the Grand Canyon and onto Colorado. Okay, so get this. Almost every version of the Island of California map includes this lake. And though there's some variation as to its location, some go a little bit further east, they're always in that same general area. And this is a feature that's exclusive to the island of California maps. Other than this one obscure map that just shows Baja California, this was the only one I could find that also shows this giant lake. Now this lake is much larger than the Great Salt Lake is today. A lot of people argue that this is the Great Salt Lake, and it is possible that this is what it looked like in the 1500s. There is plenty of space there for the lake to be bigger, but there are no rivers that run off of this lake. That's part of the reason why it's salted. The shape of the lake bed is all wrong. This really isn't what we're looking for here. And this giant lake is almost always depicted as being the exact same shape in every map. Plus, this river is possible. Rivers can change shape all the time, especially when there's a huge variation in water flow. The Colorado River system is fed mostly by melt off of mountaintops and smaller lakes today, and though a chunk of the system begins in Colorado, it's fed by many different rivers, including Green River, which begins in Wyoming. And there's enough space in there for the lake to be somewhere in Utah, Wyoming, or Colorado, 
but it's definitely not Great Salt Lake because there's a giant mountain range in the way separating the two. But that's all in the upper basin, which feeds into the lower basin, where today there's a separate river system. But you can see how close they are. It's not a huge stretch of the imagination to say that they were probably connected at one point. Today, these two river systems run in conjunction and join together at the delta at the top of the Gulf of California. So if this isn't Great Salt Lake, then this has to be some giant lake in Wyoming. But there weren't any giant lakes in Wyoming, right? So there are countless channels where mud or earth could have slid during some sort of massive landslide event. Maybe a series of earthquakes happened. I mean, California is in between two fault lines after all. Maybe it was even a series of events that happened over years that added up, eventually leading to the channel of California being filled with earth. Maybe that giant lake in Wyoming let out and washed all that earth into the channel all at once. Who knows? These are all just guesses. The problem here is timeline. The amount of time between that first expedition that said that it was an island and that second expedition that said that it wasn't were only a few years apart. The likelihood that that disaster happened in between those two expeditions is very slim. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm just not seeing it. But I'd feel much more comfortable if there was a lot of time between when California was an island and when it became a member of the mainland. I also want a lot more time for that lake to disappear. I mean, it could have happened overnight. Those sorts of things do happen. And I present to you one last possibility. And I know that it sounds ridiculous, but... I think that it's the most likely. See, the Island of California legend might have actually come from truth. I don't think that they just arbitrarily decided what the shape of California would be and just stuck with it. I believe that it's possible that the design of the Island of California was copied off of much older maps. Maps that the Spanish were using to try to find El Dorado, the city of gold. Let me explain. See, there's an open secret in the map making world, and that's that there are older maps that have information that just simply shouldn't be there. Things that cartographers shouldn't have known at the time. The most famous example is the Perry Reese map from 1513, which features shorelines of Antarctica. And I don't mean like a line of ice. I mean accurate shoreline as if there was no ice on it, even though Antarctica hadn't been discovered until 1820, 300 years after this map was drawn. And the story of the Perry Reese map is they apparently copied that information off of a much older map that has since been lost. Isn't that the craziest shit? There are a lot of weird maps from back in the day. One showing a ring of land around the earth with animals and trees. One might even be able to interpret this as an iceless version of Antarctica much the same way that flat earthers depict it. What the hell is this? We have to do more episodes on maps. That giant lake in Wyoming is our key to the island of California. I think it's going to help us prove that the island was real. Well, there is a geological paper suggesting that the southwest portion of Wyoming is a dried up lake bed and used to be home to an enormous lake. In fact, there are several dried up lake beds in the area, including a massive one in Colorado and one in Utah. So we've done it. We've proven that this lake did in fact exist. And again, this is a feature exclusively of the Island of California map. It seems as if there's a correlation between the two. When the lake disappears, the island disappears. So assuming that this all happened from a series of different disasters, which is the most likely explanation, all we need to do is determine when that lake dried up or let out, and then we'll know when the rest of it happened. We'll know when the Island of California ceased to be. I'm sorry that I keep completely changing your world here, folks. How, how is this my job? 
I literally do this for a living. So I can't answer that question. Sorry, I'm, I'm not an expert in geology or river systems or any of that crap, but that is the answer to the riddle here. All we need to do is find when that lake is gone and we know when the channel filled up. That is the key to the answer. But this lake is another argument I would use that this is all drawn off of an older map. Because why is it that none of the mainland California map makers knew that this lake existed? Why is it only the island of California map makers that knew that this lake was here? Probably because the lake was non-existent when the first explorers got there. And I just hate that these maps make so much sense. Why do they have to make so much sense? Why are they so much better than the ones that actually depict California correctly? This is the strangest and most confusing mystery that I've explored yet. I don't know if California was an island in 1540. I don't know if California was an island a thousand years ago. But at some point, it seems like California was an island.